Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I hope you can. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come in to Kim's community. We welcome you. We welcome you each and uh oh, there you go. Each and every one of you. We welcome you. I hope that you can. Yay, you can hear me. Hope that you guys are here. When you come in, we ask that you like and share, like and share. We've got some fun topics we want to share with you tonight share with you today. So please like this broadcast, share this broadcast, and also invite others to come and join you. Welcome to the community. We ask that you like, share, and subscribe. Of course, depending on what platform you are watching on, you're joining us on. Just come on in. It is Thursday night. It's time for our Cap Town Council, time for us to get together. I'm going to start sharing these just a little bit on some pages so that my friends share to a page so that my friends will know that we are on and so that they can have, um, you know, time to get in on the good conversation and everything. And I hope I cleaned off the lens on this. So I hope that it looks clear. It looks like it looks clear looks clearer than it has in the past. I've got um, some Christmas decorations up. Hey, welcome, welcome. Thanks for chiming in. Thanks, welcome to the community. Thank you for being here. Welcome to you, welcome one and all. Tell us where you are chiming in from. Would love to know where you're coming in from. We certainly appreciate it. Let's see, chain. And while you're coming in, we ask that you like and share, like and share. We've got some fun topics we're gonna talk about tonight. So go ahead and put in the topic, um, I mean, put in the, what do you call it? The comment section, where you're watching from and who you are. And we would love to have a good time with you. Share to a friend's timeline. Let's see. Um, oh, here's one that I'll share. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Hello, hello. Like and share, like and share. We've got some great topics we want to talk about tonight. Um, we are going to talk about the fact that there was somebody that drove through the Starbucks and placed an order, not just maybe a 10 or 20 or 30, not even a hundred dollar order, placed an order um, in the thousands, almost like I want to say the $50,000 range. Yeah. In the driving through Starbucks. Exactly. So we want to hear what you guys have to say about that. We also want to um, talk about, let's see, hello, like and share. Thank you. Hey, Brenda, for always being so supportive. Boiling Springs is hanging with us and we definitely appreciate it. You guys share it on your platforms and invite your friends, neighbors and loved ones to chime in with us to see what is happening. We would definitely enjoy that while you while you are liking and sharing. I am absolutely doing the same because we want folks to know that we are here and we are ready to have a good conversation. This only works if you talk with me. And so let's talk to each other. Hello, Rodney. Glad to have you with us. Thank you for chiming in. We certainly appreciate it. Asking that you like and share. That would be phenomenal. I'm going to like and share to a couple of people while we are watching. Um, I'll do two people. You do two people. How about that? Let's try to up each other um, and have a little fun with it. We appreciate you. Appreciate. Oh, wow. The name that I was looking for is right at the top of the list. Thank you so much. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. Let's go ahead and get started on our first topic of discussion. We appreciate you guys being here. Those of you who have chimed in on time, let me just open my correct page and we will get to the topics of that we were going to discuss. Uh oh, I'm looking at the wrong place. Church got so many folders and all that stuff. Okay. First of all, we know it's the holiday season. It's like the week before Christmas time. I guess Christmas is next week. And so the first question I want to ask is what is the best bargain that you found this holiday season? Best bargain. What's the best bargain that you found um, this holiday season? Uh, you don't have to tell where it was, I guess. Best bargain. I'll just put best bargain like that and put that up. Anybody have a good bargain that they found? Anything that they know of? Hello, Stacy. you are always there hanging with us. We certainly appreciate it. 
Thank you so much. And for all of you who are here, we ask that you like and share and subscribe, depending on where you're, what platform you're watching on. All right. Best bargain that you found this holiday season. What is it? The best bargain that you can say that you found. And while you are typing that in, I want to like, like and share. I want to share this broadcast with some more of our viewers and um, encourage them to come on and to like and to share. Um, I just want to put it, I think, in one more person, and then we are going to go ahead and have a good time. Um, I'm looking for, ah, there's somebody I'm looking for. I think I'll try to type it in. Hey guys. Hello. Hello. Tell us where you're watching from. Thank you for coming in. Our first, uh, our first topic of discussion is best bargains. What bargains are you finding? Have you even finished your Christmas shopping? I have not. I really have not even started. I picked up a few things here and there. Like I was, but I thought, oh, this is a good deal. That person will like this or like that. So I maybe picked up maybe three or four items and I've got like a whole slew of people to shop for and haven't done anything. I usually do my shopping kind of the week of Christmas, which I shouldn't do. I know, I know, I know. But I um that's when I usually do it, but they're talking about supply chain issues and all of that. And so that kind of has me a little nervous, but I'll be able to get people something and they'll be happy for it. They'll appreciate it. I'll just say it that way. I know that they will. But um, what about you guys? Have you had any luck on shopping? And if you have, how has it gone? What are you looking at? Um, um, are you finding everything that you want to find? I know some of the kids' toys they were talking about may have a little trouble getting or finding. Um, so tell me what you guys are looking for and what you found. Um, and if you have found any good bargains, anyone, anyone? Okay. While you are thinking about that, we're going to move on to our next topic of discussion. I told you this at the top when we came in, that there was a customer at Starbucks that ordered 52,000 worth of drinks. Starbucks customer ordered $52,000 worth of drinks. I'm putting this in the, um, in the bottom thing. Starbucks customer, Starbucks customer. Fifty two thousand worth of um, order, fifty two thousand dollars worth of drinks. Should there be a limit on how much people can order? Should there be a limit? What were they drinking? Who were they ordering for? Was it a, a misstep? What was happening with it? Starbucks customer orders $52,000. Do you know how much, what you could spend $50,000 on? Even $2,000 on. And this person ordered $52,000 worth of drinks. What were they drink? Did the drinks have gold in it? Why were the, why were the drinks so expensive? That's what I want to know. Why not so expensive? Why did they order so much? That's what I should say. Why did they order so much? And who were they ordering for? Um, and while I'm looking down, I'm, I'm just liking, I'm liking, I'm just sharing this broadcast on people's uh, pages while I'm looking down. But do you have any idea? Should there be a limit on how much customers can order? And it's $52,000 worth of drinks. How in the world did this person, unless they came like in a truck, maybe a pickup truck or something, they came in. And I wonder if the drinks were, um, had like extra caffeine in them. One of my friends, she really loves um, Starbucks. We went through the drive through once and she ordered her coffee and she was like, can I have extra caffeine in it? And I think Starbucks drinks already have quite a bit of caffeine in it. Don't they? I don't I don't know. But there are only certain drinks that I get from there and they are really, really good. But um, some of their drinks have caffeine in them already, but she wanted extra caffeine. So um, I don't know how much this person ordered. Fifty thousand dollars, fifty two thousand dollars worth of drinks at Starbucks. Let me look up my next topic of discussion. I keep going to the wrong page. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, this one I thought was really cute. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie, the holiday movie where, um, whoops, not that, where they, um, where in the movie, there are two characters. One lives, I think in England, the other character lives in the United States. And so 
these characters somehow, and I haven't watched the movie, so I can't even tell you how it all happened. But anyway, somehow they got together and they traded spaces. And I don't think they, they didn't know each other before they did this. So one person in England wanted to come to America. The American wanted to go to England just for a holiday, for a vacation, about a week or so. And so they went, they traded houses. They lived in each other's homes. Well, there's a young girl on YouTube or TikTok who did the same thing. She said that she wanted to do like the movie. The movie was called The Holiday and she wanted to go to England. And so she wanted to switch apartments with someone. Um, let me see. Would you switch apart or switch living quarters? Would you spend the holiday in somebody else's house? Which I guess if you do like an Airbnb, you kind of do. You're in that person's house but they're not in your house. So would you switch out with somebody that you didn't know? Would you change homes with them for about a week so that you could spend a holiday maybe in the town, city, or country that you wanted to go to? Say you wanted to go to Paris and you put an ad in and you found somebody from Paris who wanted to come to your city and state and they were gonna get into your um, place. They stay in your place, you stay in their place. And I don't even know if money was exchanged, um, maybe, but anyway would you do it that's the thing i know i used to live in augusta so so let me say would you change would you trade houses with someone would you trade houses with someone say for a week with someone for a week boom would you trade houses with someone for a week I'm just trying to make sure us wrote everything out correctly would would trade see i knew it wait a minute let me hide it for a second would you trade houses with someone would you trade houses with someone for a week there we go would you trade houses with someone for a week maybe in another country maybe in another city and state here's the thing i used to live in augusta georgia and so every year there's the masters tournament and so there were quite a few people who rented out their homes um, for people who would come in from out of town, um, from another city or state, or even from overseas. They would come to go to the Masters Tournament in Augusta, and they would rent their homes out and a uh, pretty lucrative uh, practice for a lot of people there. However, um, the Augusta National seems to be building and they're um, making accommodations for people who come to their area. So I don't know how long, I'm, I'm sure it will still go on, but I don't know how many people will still be able to participate in it because um, they are making it convenient for people who come to be able to stay on their property. But uh, I digress. At any rate, would you trade houses with someone for a week for to go live maybe in Australia or to go and live in um, Paris or I'm saying live to vacation in Paris or um, you just leave the key under the mat, under the doormat. They leave a key for you under their doormat for you to get in. I don't know. I think. Um, the way that we live now as people and the way that we travel, even with Airbnbs, you're kind of technically doing that anyway. Um, so I don't know if it would be as weird, but if you're trade, let's think though, let me think. What if you trade it, you're trading places with someone and you know, you call them and like, Hey, I broke that picture that you had on the wall or in, I broke that vase that you had in the hallway and you know it was like a million dollar vase would you think that they would have repercussions and they would probably they would do something to your home maybe they would maybe they wouldn't they would probably be more mature they wouldn't be petty like that petty petty like petty people only what do you say it only to only stacy probably type in quickly finish your sentence <laughs> um but um, I think it would be okay. Let me try to think of what I would take out though. I probably would. Oh, but you know what too? And I, and probably because I've seen this done before, it's not as weird, but there was a girl, let me go back to this, a girl on TikTok who put in an ad on TikTok. She lives in Boston. A girl in Boston posted a message for someone in England to switch apartments with her. And so that's what she was looking for, for somebody to switch an apartment with her. Um, and another country would be nice only if you knew it was safe. That's the thing. Let me put that up. Yeah, switching in another country would be nice only if you knew it was safe. How do you know that though? That's the thing. Going to a whole nother country with a whole different set of laws. Um, and I know we travel there, but if you stay in a hotel, you almost feel like there's a, 
maybe a false sense of security because you can at least um, account for your stuff and kind of have a home base to go to. But if you go to a whole nother country, how do you know they don't have their friends out waiting for you? I know that sounds so crazy, but in this day and time, who knows? I mean, you know, anything is possible. Who knows what could happen? Um, if you went to another country, I guess you'd have to follow the same, not I guess, you'd have to follow the same safety precautions that you would if you were traveling abroad, even if you were staying like in a hotel or what have you. But staying in someone's home, that just seems so personal. Like, how do you know who ha who else has a key? And would you wake up with somebody standing over you? I'll tell you something funny. A friend of mine um, has traveled overseas female and she traveled and stayed in an Airbnb and like traveled by herself. She went with a group, like with a, a travel group or something that like um, you, there are like travel groups that you can um, travel with or connect with like on Facebook or whatever. And so she went with a travel group, but she was like technically by herself because she didn't really know anybody in that group. Well, she went and she got her lodging and stayed in an Airbnb. And I was like, oh my goodness, are you serious? Because like, um, how do you know, I'd have to just look that, I didn't even put any lipstick on. How do you know that you wouldn't wake up with somebody standing over you? Um, and she was, I mean, I guess she felt perfectly safe. She didn't see anything wrong with it, but I'm like, girl, you are braver than I am because that would have just been my concern. I'm with you, Stacey, about whether or not it's safe. Would you trade houses with someone for a week? Uh-oh, sorry, for a week. Mm. I got my little Christmas lights up there and put my lipstick on while I'm talking to y'all. Anybody else have any comments or insight? <laughs> Trying to do this backward. There you go. <sighs> Anybody else need to put makeup on? <laughs> Maybe I'll do a makeup tutorial. That'll be cool, huh? I can see myself and then do the... Um, lashes and that's what I, I didn't put on my lashes I'm not going to put that on but I wanted to put some lipstick on while I was talking to y'all anybody else have a comment let me see so we have talked about a couple of things what is the best bargains that you found so far um, during this Christmas time if you are out Christmas shopping have you finished your Christmas shopping at all have you finished your Christmas shopping at all? The second thing we talked about was a Starbucks customer ordered $52,000 worth of drinks. Um, I guess they could have ordered, I mean, there's only so much on the menu. Oh my goodness. How could, I'm trying to think, you'd have to order maybe 10, 10 item. I mean, 10, 10 of each item, I'm saying 10 maybe 25 of each item. I'm not really sure. Thank you guys for the thumbs up and the hearts. Certainly appreciate it. Ask you to like and share. Thank you so much. Um, I'm saying 10, maybe 20 or 30 of each item, of each and every item on the menu. So I know that stores stock up. Um, they stock up on their, um, their cups and their products and inventory and all that stuff. Did they have enough inventory to meet the demand and to meet the demand of their regular customers because every time i go past a starbucks the line is wrapped around the building out around the corner down the block and all the way down to the expressway wherever a starbucks is so the starbucks is like it goes on forever the line does because so many people are there but if somebody ordered fifty two thousand dollars worth of products oh my goodness and I was like, how in the world do you fit them in your car? But I guess I could have had a pickup truck or a van or um, I guess a mobile home or some. I don't know. Could I, And I don't know how you even put that out. You put it in the shipping crates or maybe they came with their own. I don't just the weirdness of it all. That's just a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to order and a lot of stuff to kind of deal with. And then the third thing that we talked about is would you trade houses with someone for a week? And what would you lock up? That's what I was going to say earlier. And I guess I've, it doesn't seem weird to me. This it doesn't because of the day and age that we're in with people doing Airbnb, things of that nature, and even things that I told you that I saw when I lived um, in Augusta and people rented out their homes and they would have like room. I knew people who rented their homes. So they would have like rooms where they would put certain things in, maybe their valuables or I don't know. They would put certain things in, but they would lock it. Like one of my um, friends, they would 
put, they had a room, like a closet and it had, they put a lock on it and it was like a lock, like a big lock with a key lock key. And they would um, lock, you know, stuff in there that they, they wouldn't want people to touch, whatever that would be. But I think I would probably take my valuables out of the house, you know, your jewelry and stuff like that. But everything else, I don't know. Would you leave your pictures up or would you change your pictures out to be neutral? I think. But you know what? They were there were those who um, rented their house out houses out through like um, realtor companies and they were like official officially renting out their homes, they had like standards, like they had to buy sheets and um, blankets and pillows and pillowcases that were specifically for the individuals who were renting the houses out. And they, I guess they would have an inspection. They had to hire an outside maid service to come in and to clean the house um, every day, or I don't know how often, but anyway, they had to hire an outside maid service. And so they had to have special, they couldn't have the sheets that they had, you know, in the back of the linen closet that they just pulled out and put on their beds. They had to have um, special things. And so they had, I knew um, friends that had like containers and it had like master's linen, master's pillows, you know, stuff like that. Uh, master's towels. You had to have towels and washcloths and all that stuff for people. And so they would have things that were just separate that nobody else would use during the year. And um, the other thing that I know when they rented their houses out, they had, um, they received like half of the payment up front. And of course you signed that contract and then you got the other half of the payment when the event went on, when the event, the event actually happened. And so um, it was pretty lucrative for a lot of people. I know quite a few people who did it. And some of the folks who had like major, I mean, like beautiful, big, gigantic homes, they would rent them out. And I mean, that would just be really cool for them to rent out. Um, and it just helped. It helped a whole lot. So wondering if you, I, I think they had, and I talked about the pictures as I'm looking at my pictures, I think they had to take down their pictures. They had to make them like neutral, neutral pictures like you know if you have a picture of your family up or whatever i think they had to put up like you know put a picture of the ocean or a picture of the sunset or something like that so anyway there are certain things that they had to adhere to but if you were just doing it with somebody that you met online um what would you change what would you hide um, would you um take anything down would you take anything out of the house i think i would just take jewelry um and uh, I don't know what else I would take because of course, I guess everything is insured. Not, I guess it is. Um, and that's another thing. What if something happened while the person was staying at your house? Would your insurance company still cover it? They probably would. Cause I'm, I'm thinking about if you let somebody else drive your car, if they drive your car with your permission, I think the insurance company will take care of it. But if they're driving your car without permission, then that's where you get into trouble. I think, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just talking. I don't know. So if any of you know, please correct me. But um, in your home, I think it would be the same thing. Your home is just covered, whether or not you're there or not, your home is covered, whether people are staying overnight or not, your home is covered, um, whether or not, oh, you do have those addendums that say, like if somebody gets um, hurt, you have, a certain amount on your insurance policy or something like that. Okay. I need to call somebody that knows, knows something about insurance, <laughs> something at all about insurance. Well, we do have Christmas decorations up. I hope you guys have your decorations up because we have them. Um, I haven't done much. I did the fireplace and then got the tree. The tree is de decorated. Um, and that's pretty much it. Got a few things hanging around. Like I put little bells on the doors and all that stuff. Um, but I didn't, I guess that's really it. Um, it feels Christmassy, I guess. Christmassy, I don't know, <laughs> for the most part. But I'm not complaining. Again, Christmas is just around the corner. It's just next week. Uh, the six, Today is the 16th. Gary, look at this calendar. Um, next week is the 23rd. And then Christmas Eve is on fr that Friday. So yeah, Christmas is a week away, basically. It Christmas on next Saturday. So if you guys are ready for Christmas, hope you are. Give us a thumbs up and a heart and maybe put something in the chat. 
If you are not ready for Christmas, get on the stick because you only have about a week to get everything that you need. What are you guys making for Christmas? Any special Christmas gifts? I mean, Christmas meals, Christmas dishes that you're making? Um, would love to know what those are. Maybe we can do a cooking thing next week um, on maybe some Christmas dishes or Christmas cookies. I really have had a taste for some homemade from scratch, Christmas cookies, just like with good butter. Mm, 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 mm. My mouth is watering already. Some good butter cookies on Christmas, some with frosting, some maybe not, but yeah, maybe I'll do that. Make some Christmas cookies and make some cupcakes. I don't know if I'll make a cake, but I'll do something. Um, we'll do something that's festive. Ooh, a spiral ham. Do you know how to make it or do you get it from honey baked ham? A spiral ham is always good. And I know that I've seen people um, who have different ham recipes and a lot of, not a lot, I've seen them put like the pineapples on top. And I've also seen them, I've seen people cook a ham and put like Coca-Cola on it so that it'll have that sugary taste. But I know when you get it from like honey baked ham, there's like a sugar crust on top of it um, that goes along with it. Oh, of course, store-bought. Okay, not a problem, but whatever the case may be, spiral ham it is, spiral ham. <laughs> I love that. Fire ham, don't eat too much ham, but ham is good. I'm trying to, do you cook a turkey also for Christmas or do you stick with the ham? I know some people will cook like, um, is it turkey or ham for Christmas or is it both? I'm gonna put that in there. Turkey or ham at ham. Turkey or ham for Christmas. need something that will type out. I put it in the chat. So let's see. Oh, I'm trying to hit enter. There we go. We'll put it up. There we go. Turkey or ham for Christmas. Which is it for you? Turkey or ham? Or do you cook like, I, I know people have had duck, Cornish hens. That might be good. Cornish hens would be good. Um, what else? I don't know what other kind of meat you could use. Tofu. A Turk, a Turk, Turk tofu, tofu Turk or something. Have y'all heard of that? A Turk, it's not real turkey, but it's like a tofu. It's tofu made to look or shape like a turkey or something. It's to turkey or to tofu turkey or something. I can't even, I don't even know what it's called. Um, <laughs> but that is funny. Turkey or ham for Christmas. And Stacy is saying love spiral ham. Well, listen, guys. We are going to wrap things up a little early tonight, um, but I have totally enjoyed being with you. Thank you guys so much. Next week, we'll do some cooking. We'll do some Christmas cooking. Um, at least that's the plan. I might just be sitting here next week, so we'll see what happens. But if there are some recipes that you come across you think might be fun to try, um, we can cook them together if you want to. Don't mind doing that. But you can cook on your end. I'll cook on my end and we'll compare and show the, end, the ending product. But whatever it may be, whatever you guys do this week, please stay safe. Look out for each other. Um, whether you're vaccinated or not, please stay safe. Get your immune system built up. Be, you know, Start eating right. Get out. Do some exercise so that you can build up your lung capacity. Take your vitamins, especially take vitamin D if you need to, vitamin C, um, things that will help your immune system. Ginger. We talked about this before. Ginger and cinnamon. Drink that hot. That's good for you. So I've been told, I don't know. I'm just spread. I'm just sharing information. I have no idea about any of this. I'm just sharing information. Um, lemon water, warm lemon water is good for you. So make sure you um, do what you can to build up your immune system. Get out there and do some exercise. Make sure, and I say do some exercise, get out there and get your heart rate going, get your heart rate pumping. And um, just appreciate you guys being with us tonight. Thank you so much for hanging with us and we will see you next week. We'll cook something um, if we feel like it. Again, we may just be sitting here talking next week, but whatever the case, we will see you on Sunday at 8 a.m. And then we will see you next Thursday at 8 p.m. It will be the day before Christmas Eve. So we may even be wrapping a few presents. Who knows what's happening? But if you need to do shopping, make sure you do that and be safe out there in those streets of Kim's community. Stay out, stay out of the streets and get on the sidewalk. That's what they're made for. I'm just teasing. Get, uh, get out there and have fun, but be careful. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Have a good night. Appreciate you. Take care.